Martin, you've got some breaking news that you broke today about Mao Meninga possibly joining the South Sydney Rabbitohs as coach. Yeah, huge news around the game, Braith. And the Bunnies, look, we know that it's been diabolical to date, their performances this season. A lot of pressure on the power brokers at the club. What they've done after that loss to the Warriors, which means it's only five wins from their last 18 games, they have began discussing possible replacements, people who they intend to target and go after that with a view to taking over from Jason Dimitriou. I believe it will be Jason's last game in charge on the weekend against Cronulla. And the target candidate who they have identified as their top priority is the Australian Kangaroos coach, Mal Meninga. Now, it's quite complicated because he is the Kangaroos coach through until the end of 2026. He also works here at Fox League. But they know, they know that they need a circuit breaker. And after that loss to the Warriors and the magnitude of it, mm. they've landed on Big Mal as he is their number one candidate if they can break a deal. Katie, what do you think about this? Is Mal the right man to go in as caretaker coach, coach for the rest Look, of the year? It's come from left field, this one. Look, uh, Mal wasn't particularly successful when he, last time he was a club coach at the Raiders, but in fairness to Mal, he's grown enormously as a coach since then. He's obviously had that, went on that enormous run with Queensland. I think it was, what did he go, eight out of nine series, I think he won. Nine and then, out of ten, yeah. Nine out of ten series he won, and then... Uh, obviously, with Australia, he sits about 80% winning record there. So, yeah. he's been a magnificent representative coach. It's very different coaching club football to rep football. But, to be fair to Mal, he, 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 there's no doubt he's learned a lot in, in that 15, 20 years since he's coached at club level. So... I think it's a bit of an unknown. It shocked the pants off me when it happened, <laughs> like when it was announced. I, 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 was, I really was. I don't think anybody had Mal Meninga on a list of potential candidates. So it's, it's an unusual one. Um, and to be fair, I don't know how it's going to end up. I, I, Mal's a great leader, though, mm. and one of the greatest leaders. So, uh, And that's what that club desperately lacks right now. Good way to finish it. They do need leadership, and Mal's one of the best at it. Mick, he's got relationships, too, with... with, with some of the biggest, best, yeah. and best players in the team. He's coached them uh, for Australia. Uh, how do you see it? Yeah, it is an interesting one. When, when I caught wind of it this morning as well, I was a bit taken aback by it. And uh, as you said, he's close with Latrell Mitchell, Jack yeah. Wyden, Campbell Graham, Damian Cook, Cam Murray, all guys that he's had in the Australian setup over the last couple of years. And he's spoken glowingly about Latrell Mitchell over the last couple of years. And, and that would appeal to South Sydney that he has such strong relationships. I would say that's no, what's got him. No doubt. Yeah, that's a big reason he's got no the job. No doubt. Well, he hasn't got it yet, right? But if he gets it, I think that's a big reason why, because the relationships he does have with no, those key players. No doubt. And, and we've seen the way Mao's been able to manage. Uh, he's, a ma he's a manager. He's, mm. he's not a... Fun, he'll need Ben Hornby to run the team, run mm. the training sessions, all those things if, if it push comes to shove. But he is a man manager. And as Kenty said, he's had success at rep level, and I think he will treat it like a rep camp. It's only for the rest of the year. Is he's it... not going to be the long-term coach at South Sydney. Yeah, Hoops, is that why he got the gig? Is that why he's about to get the gig possibly? Is because of the relationships he's got with those, with the likes of Luttrell and Cam Murray and the, the, the Campbell Graham? No question that's a big part of it, Braith. But I also think, you know, the Bunnies management have rightfully been under fire over the opening month of this season for a variety of different reasons, and they're multi-layered. But I think a huge element of it is that, at the moment, everything is such a, a shit show at South. There's a lot of infighting going on. It takes a strong leader with a particular style of aura to be able to go in and very quickly galvanise everybody, get everybody on the same page and try and turn a losing dressing room into one that can have some success. Mm. The only coaches I would think in the game at the moment who could possibly do it would be the likes of Wayne Bennett, Craig Bellamy... Ricky Stewart, Mal Meninga can do it. There's no question in my mind. I think it's a masterstroke from Bunny's management that they have come up with this. They're not happy about the fact that it's made its way into the public arena already, but they're going to have to wear it. Uh, and I think that in all likelihood, there's a very good chance that Mal will be appointed early next week. What happens, Kenny, if it doesn't work? They lint through to round 25 and yeah. go home for yeah. an early summer. But, but what's be... interesting, I find interesting about this is whether... Jason Dimitrio has been told about I this. I don't believe he would have. It almost makes it untenable now, Kenty. Doesn't well, it? I, I, that's the point. Yeah. Like, if there was any, if Jason Dimitrio, the narrative all week has been he's got 80 minutes to save his career. There's no doubt he's put all his efforts into. He's, he's made some changes, some pretty big team changes for this weekend's game. He, he's no doubt aware of the rumblings around there. He says in his cell, in, in himself, I've got this weekend to start to turn it around. It's the last 
last shot for him, mm. and now he finds out, probably through the media, I dare suggest, I, dare, you know, I would find it very unlikely someone at South has called him up and said, listen, just a heads up, we're just seeing if Mel's interested. Mm. I, I dare say Dimitri has found out about it by someone sending, sending it to him on his phone, and which is pretty poor form for the Rabbitohs, to be fair. And I think that they, uh, yeah, it doesn't matter now for Dimitri. I think it's all over. And from his point of view, he might be better off saying, OK, let's just work out the deal now. Well, and, uh, in fact, I'd even go as far if I was Dimitri. I'd challenge South Sydney and I'd say, if this is true, I won't be here this weekend. Work out your deal. And, mate, South can coach themselves this weekend. We're all old enough and ugly enough to know that once you see headlines saying a coach has got three games to save his career, or what happened over the course of last weekend, 80 minutes to save his career, that's the death knell. Well, you, you know as well as I do that once it gets to that stage, Dimitri yes, he's made some changes. That Absolutely. That, that, that isn't the point here. Absolutely. JD deserves better treatment than what he has received over the course of the last week. But the reality is the Bunnies are clearly in the market for a different coach and well, we're not it, talking about entitled, for next year. We're talking about right here and right now. He's entitled to say to South City, pay me out now what you, you, you is in the contract, which I believe he had that nine-month clause in there. It's about 400000 Yeah, so that... Don't, that nine-month clause, OK? That's in there. Pay me out that and find someone else to coach him this weekend. Like, what's the point of him turning up this weekend? Well, would he, see that, as, would he see that as quitting, though? Would he see that as quitting? Because the, 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 the fight that beats within all professional what coaches... Does it, what does it matter? Yeah, but the fight that beats within all Mate, professional walk out coaches with some dignity. wouldn't want to quit. Walk out with some dignity. Walk out and say, you know what, you're not treating me like this. You're not telling me... Because I've got no doubt there's also been people at South City say, Mate, don't believe the headlines, you'll be OK. Hmm. Well, they, they would have had to have told him that, Kenty. Otherwise, the job would have been over and done. Well, there you go. They, they so, would have had to, they so, would have so had to give him some So now it's come out that Melbourne has been approached. It's been confirmed everywhere. Not, not publicly yet been confirmed, but it has been multiple sources have been, had it confirmed from multiple people, right? So it's, it's, it's 100% mm. correct. At, at least Mel has been approached. We don't know who else has been approached. Well, the other there name, might be someone else. There's the other names that, that have been linked to the job are Michael Maguire... Billy Slater, which is not going to be Billy Slater, and Ben Hornby, who, who's the current assistant coach okay. there. And the only one possible, the only potential candidate inside South Sydney that could take over. So if you're Jason Dimitri, why aren't you saying South Sydney, stick it up your clacker, I'm out? Well, I can't argue with that, Kenty. I, I can't. If, if, if he goes to him tomorrow and say, is this true, have you spoken with me or had any contact or have even drawn up a short list to replace me next week, I would walk as well. I don't think there's been any formal or informal approach, right, with so, Mal. So Mal. But I do, do think... Do we know if Mal's interested, too? Yes, he is. He is interested. I'd be surprised if he wasn't, given the roster that they've got and his existing relationships and rapports with those players, as you touched on earlier, I'd be stunned if he wasn't. I think perfectly. Mal's already... I've heard Mal's already indicated he's interested yeah, okay. if the job becomes available. And it suits Mal perfectly. With, with that playing group, with the players that he knows that are entrenched there. And we've got to be clear, it's just for this year. Mal Meninga's not going to be the long-term coach yeah. of South yeah. Sydney. They'll go and try and get Wayne Bennett. No, they're going to chase the Wayne. Maybe. Yeah. But it's a, it's, right, it's, a, club, next it's year. a club job, though. Like, that, that's not going to be just a simple... It's not like coaching it's Australia or coaching Origin for a six-week campaign. It is day-to-day. -day, it is every day. Yeah. You know, some but the, 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 end, the end point's, the end point's yeah. there because it's only a short stint. So he, he'd be able to get so himself up for that. Mick, it, it's a, there's still 19 weeks in the regular oh, yeah, yeah, competition. I, no, I understand that, Kenty, but if it's that's, just for this year, he's got enough now to navigate it. Months. He can navigate it. And with he'll surround himself. I don't know. With other Look, hey, there's no guarantee that's going to get easier in the next 19 well, I, I weeks. I don't think anyone, even if Mal comes in, I don't think any of us see him playing well, there, football. There you go. So it's well, not going to be an easy run. So for it's not going to be fun, is it? It's not going to be all bells and no. trumpets and people it's singing the praises all the time. It's not going to be like coaching the kangaroos. Well, there's, there's no, no way. way. It's going to be a lot of criticism. Storm round eight, and then Panthers round nine. <laughs> So he's going to step straight into the into the uh, fire pan. It's a baptism of fire. It is a baptism of fire. It's not going to be easy for Mal. It's not, but, I mean, given what he's achieved with Queensland and what he's achieved with Australia, I think his winning record is something like 88%. He's won 23 out of 26 Test matches. That's an outstanding record. But that's with an Australian team that is at that level. unbelievable. Yeah, of course. No disrespect, because no, that's an historical no, dominance. That's, 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 that's been dominance yeah, it is. Ever. It is, but I think we all agree, right, with the aura. He's an immortal of the game. Mm. The aura and the type of man manager that he is, the respect he commands Very different from players. I think ball. he can walk in and quickly fix a wounded dressing room mm. that has got cracks all over it and has got players who the, the, are disenchanted and not on the same page. The danger is he comes in and he, he puts his little magic elixir over the, the group, which he's got. 
and they will feel his presence. And you talk about his aura and all the rest. They will feel that immediately. But if things don't change in their efforts, which we've seen no change in the first five weeks of the competition, if things don't change, and even with Mal Meninga in the dressing room and they go from a loss to Penrith, a loss to Melbourne, they, and they start going, and suddenly they, in the next six games they stack up five losses. One, Mal's not used to it. Uh, so we've got to see how Mal handles that because he never experienced that as Origin Australian coach. And it's 20-odd years since he experienced it as the Canberra Raiders coach. So that's, there's no guarantee it works. And the other thing is, once the players sit there and after four or five weeks, when all the, the, the fuss has died down, they go, well, hang on, what are we doing here? So what's a better what? alternative? I, I, I don't know if it... Look, that's well, I think I, that's Michael why they've better if you alternative like, if you want one. Well, it's a different... That's what Michael I'm going to say. How's he going to do that? He's coaching New South Wales in 50 well, that, days that's, in that's, his first season at the helm well, of New okay, South well, Wales. Well, you already know that I don't believe... Series. I don't believe you... Oh God, this, this situation, I'll grant you that, but I don't believe you can't coach Origin and club football. I think that the good coaches can still do it, OK? They can still do it. I don't, think, I, 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 think that, I don't think there is a way you can appoint Michael Maguire short term. He's got to come in and say, you've got the rest of this oh, year right, and you he have... Can't now, you, you know, he, the situation. he can be the coach. I've got no issue with Michael Maguire being the coach of South well, Sydney. Well, would Michael Maguire quit New South Wales now no. if he was offered a Ooh, four or I'd five year deal at South you Sydney? Know, you know him. Well, 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 it's well, money the, the, it's but, unnecessary, hey, though. You don't need to do that. It's unnecessary. He can coach New South Wales and if he's the guy to coach South Sydney, he can do that next year. Mm. He doesn't need I, to be rushed I, into that not, job. I think Mal is the right person for right now with what he brings. You know, he's kind of like Wayne in a way where he's, he's, he's a great man manager. Uh, he, he's some strong personalities in that team. And I think he's right for, for that right for, the, for mm. the rest of the year. But what it will do if it's not successful, it will expose these players even more. Because if Mal Manier can't go in there and demand respect and change their attitudes and get these guys back Spot on track, on. these players are going to be horribly exposed. Yeah. So it's going to be pretty interesting to see how it does pan out with Mal at the helm. He's been able to do it with every other team that he's had his hands on, apart from, you know, he struggled mm. with the, the club team at Canberra, but he's a lot better coach now. But he, he, we know the awe and the impact that he does have is, is in, in Mal Meninga. So... The players will need to deliver. Yeah, they'll run out of excuses, Braith. They, they'll run, they, they can't look around for excuses if Mal Meninga's in there. And he'll expose them. He'll know uh, as well if they're not pulling their weight. But you 100% agree mm -hmm. with that. If he comes in and, and he's parachuted in, into that role, then they'll have nowhere to hide but yeah. put in some decent well, performances. Wayne showed when he first got into South Smith. I think they won their first seven games straight when Wayne arrived at, at Redfern mm. at the time. They're now at Heffron Park. Where I think the Bunnies' management have been a little bit naive is... You know, starting to talk about or, or spitball ideas of possible replacement coaches who are going to come in and be parachuted in over the top of JD and expecting that that's somehow not going to then all of a sudden make its way out into the mm. wider public. It, it's naive. When you're starting well, to go to board members... The problem's members, bigger now than time yesterday the, by the fact that this is our hoops. Well, when you're starting to canvas board members and player agents about... What do you think okay, of this person? What do you this. think of that candidate? What would you think if Mal Meninga was to be the person who what, takes over? What about over? this then? What about this then from a club point of view? If you're running a club, OK, and suddenly you're sitting, sitting there and you've allowed it to get released and you're out there now canvassing other coaches to take over just for the rest of this year, OK, what does that say to this playing group about their performance in respect to this weekend's game? It basically means it's meaningless. Other than their own self-pride, which up till now has been slightly lacking in the first five games with well, some of their performances. It, so that, that, look, the fire that Jason Dimitri has tried to put under his team this week to say, guys, it stops here and it turns around this week, that's now gone. The club has killed that on him. And the club are answerable to that. Well, it gives them an easy out, an easy out, and we've seen the, the players take too many easy outs of, of late. Too many, yeah, but too many, too many officials and executives at the club have got the easy out too. They just swan from one to the next to the next. It's unacceptable. I, I, seriously, the joint needs a broom through it. It's incredible to think that last May they agreed on a three-year extension for Jason Dimitri incredible. when he had Souths on top of the competition at that time. Premier now, it didn't get rubber-stamped. Yeah. It didn't get rubber-stamped until October because then the wheels time. started to get a little bit wobbly. But they did they still, still decide did to ratify it. And now we learn there's this exit clause where they've only got to give him nine months. But the power brokers, Nick Pappas, the people who are in charge at the club, they've got a lot of 
questions to answer. They do, and it's watch this space to see if Malmeninga takes over, well, as close as next week, possibly. This could be, well, it looks like it's going to be his last game, JD. It could be Friday, it the could way be Friday. things are moving. Who knows? 